everyone. I am so excited to be starting my episode two of HBCU-ish. I am very excited to be talking with my very special guests, Trinity and AJ. So let me introduce them, Mr. and Miss Freshman for Howard University. AJ Elliott is a freshman honors international business major from Detroit, Michigan. AJ is a man of many layers. As well as being an honor student, he boxes, plays basketball, teaches others to invest in the stock market, while also taking time to invest in the stock market himself, volunteers in his community, and spends time with his family. After AJ graduates, he hopes to become an investment baker and continue to use his platform to advocate for unity within the Black community. He is extremely passionate about creating opportunities for Black people to prosper and come together to build a stronger Black community, locally and nationally. It was not only AJ's leadership, versatility, and perseverance that enabled him to become the man he is today. It was also his humility, his unwavering worth ethic, and his love for helping others that allowed AJ to make it this far. He has brought these same skills to Howard University as Mr. Freshman. Next, I'm going to be doing Trinity's bio. Trinity Colbert from Atlanta, Georgia, musical therapy, the only freshman musical therapy major at the Chadwick A. Bosman College of Fine Arts created a platform called Who Is, helping freshmen discover who they are and beating imposter syndrome. She also provided a scholarship for HU26 entitled Finding the True You. She was also chosen to be a campus ambassador for Pretty Little Thing Clothing. She hosted events such as Black Card 101, Dress to Impress, Channel Your Inner Ooh La La, and with the Howard's major at Dance Line. A freshman ambassador for Last Bison Standing, she was also featured on Howard 1867 for decision day and she was also previously served as the miss district of columbia hbcu teen with the miss hbcu teen pageant lastly she is the owner of mime if i dance so excited to talk to you guys how are you feeling it's been a been a real relaxed sunday awesome Mm -hmm, for sure okay let's start with these questions so, you guys go to Howard University, the mecca of HBCUs. How is that whole experience? Oh. I, I like Howard. Um, for me, it's like Howard, I knew I was going to come here. It was my first choice all the time. It was like the only college I actually had an experience with coming here because my sister went here. My sister graduated at HU21. And so, like, even though, like, other schools gave me more money and stuff, it was just like, I felt like this was the place where I needed to be to develop as a person because HBCUs, I feel like, are crucial to the development of any Black person to be confident in themselves and in their skin, no matter where they are in the world. So that's how it was for me. I feel like it's helped shape me as a man and as a person. Oh, me? Um, no, Howard's actually the only HBCU that has my major music therapy. Uh, a lot of other schools offer money, especially being a woman of color, because music therapy is not a black people based career field. So just going to Howard and teaching black people in my career field, it kind of made me want to be a music therapist even more because if they can do it, I can certainly do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Um, pertaining to AJ, I find it so cool that your sister was Howard alum. And I actually find that a lot of people that go to HBCUs, they usually are, are like legacies or they have maybe a friend or like a family member that went there. So I find that very awesome. And then pertaining to Trinity, I know I actually spoke to Miss Howard University yesterday and her circumstance was actually similar to yours where she was saying that Howard was, I believe she said it was the only HBCU that had a BFA program for musical theater. So I just find it so cool that you guys are able to kind of have that connection. And I've, I've never heard of musical therapy until you told me that that was your major. And I find that so fascinating. So I think that's just great. Really? Really? 
Mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was either. Oh, it took me a minute. It's okay. Hold on. Okay. 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 Okay
and then your interview as well. We have an extra interview we have to do just one on one with the coordinators to just see if you're like a good candidate to be a Mr. or Miss Freshman. So that's the voting breakdown and how you get elected. She could probably mm -hmm. tell you more about how the pageants themselves are different though. No, I'm not I'm not a pageant. Oh, because right? I did a pageant before. Yeah, so she, you yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, you're right. So um so one of the mm -hmm. things see that was where like Miss America, that definitely was what you're kinda of used to, like definitely your pageant style is over here. You got an intro, you got a platform piece, and really, I know y'all have opening dance. Um, we have BioWalk, that's a university thing, BioWalk is. But it's the introduction that is kind of like. That's different. Guys, like, introduction to see, my name is, but here, you you gotta put on. Oh, like, yeah. You gotta, your intro song gotta be high. Mm -hmm. Like, it has to be like, that's how people know you. People know you for what you say and your talent. Let me tell you about talent. Your talent is bad. <laughs> I'm not saying you're gonna be bad, but like, people remember stuff like that. They don't remember, oh, you had a great platform. You they remember that girl got on stage and <laughs> her she sung and she cannot. That's basically basically like this power culture. I mean, someone can't sing like that. And I'm gonna say, like for anybody that's thinking about doing something like this, you yeah. could you could think that you're like you're not a pageant type guy you're not a performative type guy you don't have you don't have really special talents like that's literally all the things i thought when i was going into it like those were the things that was keeping me from wanting to run like i don't i'm not really i'm really a reserved type guy i'm not very outspoken um i don't I'm, i can't sing or dance none of that is in my skill set but i'm like i'm gonna just play to my strengths i'm good at reading or writing what could i do with that and for my my pageant talent i ended up writing a play and I had my friends acting. I can't act either. I can't do nothing. But I, I can I could organize. I, I know how to read, write. I'm kind of funny. So I just put that all together into a play. I know I'm funny. I put that all together in a play. And, like, for the intro, too, like, I was really, like, a reserved person. And, like, through the training, because, you know, they give us pageant training, too, because they can't expect everybody to just know what to do. So we had like a week of training and they really like got me together and taught me how to be that outspoken person that I wasn't before. And so like just being in this process alone has really helped me grow a lot. And I'm just thankful. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Mind you, whole time I can sing, dance, mm -hmm. play, can really so, we like this, Terry, yeah. like, I don't know. We we like the opposites of each other. Well, mm -hmm. that's the way like, you can't see me without thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hearing that, you guys have definitely a different experience than mine. I know that, I guess the pageant system that um, I compete on, we do have introductions. I don't know if they're similar to your introduction, though. But we have like a 60 second intro during nationals where we're able to talk about ourselves. We do have talent, but it's an optional, so we don't have to do it. Um, but I think it's really cool how. Um, how AJ said, although like he doesn't sing or dance, he was able to kind of incorporate his strengths into his talent. So my next question would be, so at HBCUs, you guys have amazing homecoming weeks. And I saw you guys had Chloe come. Please talk to me about how homecoming week was. And I also saw on the HU Royalty Instagram that I don't know if you guys you guys were like royalty during homecoming week right or like during some of the games you guys sit in like a separate section please talk to me about that because i think that is literally so cool. you want to start or i can start okay what, what are you going to talk about i was going to talk about the parade i was going to talk about the homecoming week uh, <laughs> i'm gonna be transparent chloe did not perform yeah they did not perform no. No, didn't she didn't perform it was a game now it was nice that they was there, but yeah. no, they didn't perform. Oh. We usually do have great homecomings. Absolutely, oh. I will say this year for my freshman mm -hmm. year, coming with my high expectations. You know, you hear about Howard at homecoming. It, it, I I felt disappointed almost, but they made up for it because the other events during homecoming week were all for it. Like being in road court and being to get to go to all the events, it was just. It was really cool with like the step show, the fashion show, the parade was my favorite part, of course, because they 
Yeah, they paraded you around like you really were royalty, and it made you feel like like you reaped the rewards of your hard work, and it made made you feel like successful. I don't know if that's the right word, but like fulfilled, maybe. Well, you really are royalty. You really are royalty. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it it was a nice experience. They they like they put us in these cars. We had nice nice luxury cars that the alumni donated for us to just ride around in and just like. Meet, greet, greet people, let our faces be seen, and it was just like a really cool experience that I really didn't expect. I, I was I didn't know they did that. I seen it on the website, and I'm like, oh, that looks cool, right. but like I didn't know we was gonna do that. Uh, my Wait, pause. You so you guys didn't have? I'm sorry, Trinity. I have I have a follow up question for that. So you guys we, didn't have any like we had performers. Um, performers perform at they your homecoming? They were performers that I was excited to see. Mm -hmm. For example, in comparison, Clark Atlanta and Morehouse, I think. Or no, Spellman and Morehouse, Spellhouse. Yeah. Drake. They 21, had Drake, right? Our 21 Savage. was Glorilla. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to leave it there. Yeah, she, she's a good, great artist. I like Glorilla, but she's not Drake. She's not basically. I wouldn't be. Hmm. Okay. But I say the experience of being at Howard during homecoming is one to behold, yeah. no matter what. Tailgate? Mm -hmm. Did you go to the tailgate? I did not. Oh, let me tell you about the tailgate, girl. Mind you, we had already walked, so I had to put my stash off, put my crown off. I still had on my dress because I, I walked in the tailgate. Let me just, like, I got mad for food. And they're like, you're this freshman. I'm like, yeah. I was just going to, like, get something to eat because I wasn't trying to fake it. They're like, oh, you want some? You want some what? Actually, yes. I'm talking about they were throwing food. That's what a tailgate is. I don't know. I thought it was a party. No, it's like it's like a you know, it's a it's like a cookout up there. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, yes, I want some fish, yes, I want some fries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so grateful, just the whole experience, like just seeing little girls like Mom, like it's a person like that, like that really had to like like just seeing black people in crown, just I'm not seeing a black person in crown with this. Yeah. I love black power. I love black Same, same. <laughs> so my next question for you guys is, what are your responsibilities with your titles? You wanna take that one? Yeah. Well, what are the things um, that you like well, you have to do? Basically, an ambassador for. Your freshman class, uh, we help with it, but we also have scholarships. That's not a requirement. Like the only the only required requirement out of us as members of the Royal Court is to host two events per semester. Well, actually, for the freshman Royals, it's actually one of them per semester. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's in our contract. We really only had to host one of them per semester. However, because we care so much about our freshman class, we host it multiple. And like I said, we he has a scholarship week. Tap in. I just have a scholarship like yeah, you know. I have a scholarship week going on right now. So basically throughout the week, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'll post five scholarships a day. And that Saturday, I will, you know, I have a Google form up, and people will upload, you know, the completed scholarship they have. And that Saturday, I will announce, like, whoever applied for the most scholarships, they'll get an additional $500 just for, you know, applying for scholarship, trying to better themselves. And that's just kind of to motivate people to, like, see that here it's money in front of your face you can go get it it's just up to them and so also last semester i had a big you know, big 3v3 basketball tournament with um alternative spring break asb that she's an asb too <laughs> but um yeah they were really big on campus and it was a really really big fun event and the winner of the basketball tournament got uh, the 3v3 tournament each person got a hundred dollars so it was a 300 hundred dollar scholarship and this is all like out of pocket just because we want to see like we want to see people better we don't want to see people struggling. We want to help as much as we can with whatever we can. Like, we struggle, too. We're in college, too. But, like, whatever we can do to help, we will. And I think it's so great that um, you guys are trying to help people get scholarships because I think that so many times people think that pageantry is all about, like, the glitz and the glamour. But there are so many amazing and positive things that you can get out of competing in pageantry. And I think it's great that you guys are – uh, helping people get scholarships that is amazing okay. so i have an individual question for both of you guys so okay my first <laughs> question it. for trinity and you said 
you said that you were the Miss District of Columbia HBCU teen. Please talk to me about that because I think I also have a few friends that have competed in that system. Is it like, mm, I'm trying to be, is it, is it like how the pageants are at Howard University or would you say that it's more like how the, um, the beauty pageants are outside of HBCUs? It's not it's like if uh, if you it provides scholarships to young black girls who want to go to HBCU. Love that. Love HBCU pageant. That's that's my family. But it's the pageantry style is Miss America regarding a walk regarding an interview, and it's all basically like how you outreach to your community as well. Because I definitely have competed in the Miss America pageant too. So. Okay. Awesome. I just want to know that because I thought because I said HBCU would be like the HBCU <laughs> pageants, but that's really cool that you had that ability to be Miss District and of Columbia. What an cool. honor. It was definitely fun, especially since mm -hmm. I'm from Georgia. Getting that question like, well, why are you in DC? Like, mm -hmm. on Howard. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. And my question is, my next question for AJ is, this is actually, I think other, other than like HBCUs, I don't know if they have male pageants, but how was that experience? Um, I can definitely speak on that. So, like, going into it, it, it kind of was like, like, I don't know. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't weird. It wasn't weird. And it wasn't as, like, bad as I thought it would be. Like, I thought I would have to act a way that was out of character. But they really, they really, like I said, they taught me how to be just outspoken in myself they told me how to play to my strengths so I use like just my personality and put it on bold and that's basically what you would do with anything in the in the pageant so I feel like it's really it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or whatever you want to be like it's just you and it's just like who you are and what you represent and it's put on stage and it's big and bright and that's all you got to focus on. Like, that's what you make it. it. The pageant is what you make it. I don't really think the gender role really had to do much with it, honestly. Because, like, I, I can understand, like, going into it, awesome. I was like, pageant? <laughs> me? But I was like, mm -hmm. so I seen it, and then they told me more about it. And, they, you know, they sent us videos, too, like, to watch to see what it would be like. Yeah, like of the past pageant. So oh, I'm like, wow. oh, I could definitely do this. Like, cause I seen, I seen men like me who like seem regular, like, and they just did it and they were just themselves and that was it. And so I, that mm -hmm. gave me the strength to like, feel like, oh yeah, I could do this. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Okay, guys, we're going to okay. stop for a second. We're going to play a little game that I played with this Howard University yesterday and I'm just gonna ask you three different questions. It's gonna be quotes by African American inspirational people. I'm gonna give you three different options and you're gonna let me know who you think it is. Okay. You guys can help each other yeah. out. Are you guys ready? Okay. okay. History has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. Do you think this was said by Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, or Michelle Obama? I know it's not even okay. It's definitely not okay. So you don't give Obama though. <laughs> it, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. It gives Gandhi those. I, I think so. Okay. I think so. You don't think Gandhi? Yeah. You guys are gonna say Gandhi? Are you sure? Okay. Your answer uh, is wrong. Why would it was Michelle Obama. I mean, I kind of, I kind of, I can understand. I don't know. Like, I like history. Yeah, history. That that was the kind of hit. That was giving Gandhi. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was giving Gandhi. Michelle was in her bag. It was, it was giving one. Gandhi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Michelle. Okay, this is the next one. It seems impossible until it's done. Was this said by Nelson? Hold on. Sorry, hey guys. Sorry for the pause. I'll say it again. It always seems impossible until it's done. Was this said by Obama, Viola Davis, or Nelson Mandela? Wait, no, let's not think about it. 
I just feel like if it was Viola Davis, how would I know that? Yes, yeah, she would. She would, but like, let's I don't think that's the answer. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now we got Obama and Obama. Mm-hmm. It's not like Obama because he's the first black president, so it's always he's impossible until it's done. That, that's true, mm. but like, mm. okay. Mandela faced a lot of like opposition too. That it, it seemed like he wouldn't get his stuff done either. Yes. And I, I also feel like because the answer was just Michelle Obama, it wouldn't be two back-to-back Obamas. And that's your problem because it would be two back-to-back Obamas because you're thinking like that. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. Can we have two separate answers? No. That's cheating. It's three answer choices. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We did two I mean, out of three. You guys one. can. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you guys no. are a team. What do you want to say? You, you can say Obama. What? You're making me second guess what mm-hmm. No, no. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I, I like the reasoning. The line of reasoning was on. Let's just say it's Uncle Barack. All right. Uh, Uncle. <laughs> Uncle Barack. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, you guys. <laughs> you guys are both wrong. It was Nelson Mandela. <laughs> That's crazy. They saw a stick to my gun. You guys were close. Okay, so okay. one more. I hope you guys get this. I hope you guys get this hey, right. The need for change bulldozed a road down the center of my mind. Was this said by no, Felicia my Rashad, <laughs> Maya Angelo, or Can you repeat the Spike quote? Lee? Sure. The need for change bulldozed a road down the center of my mind. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I actually kind of forgot the people I said other than the other than okay, so uh, Maya Angelo, Spike Lee, yeah. and I think I said Felicia Rashad. So it's not Felicia Rashad. So I just gave you guys kind of a hint since I forgot. It's definitely- Spike Lee, that's my guess. What? I don't, yeah. That's Spike Lee. It sounds pretty poetic. Spike Lee. Go ahead. Spike Lee. You guys said Spike Lee? Okay. <laughs> the answer is yeah, man. my answer. Yeah, man. What? <laughs> I hate it here. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, <laughs> you guys got zero out of three, that's but it. it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Black History Month game show. Listen, it's okay. I know. It's okay. Listen, you guys go to Howard, so it's it's okay. <laughs> okay, I have a few more questions for you guys. Anyone that is, I have like two more questions for you guys. Anyone that's on, wait, you guys can comment a, some wait, questions wait, down below. Can we switch to my live? Because my mom can't see this live. Okay, yeah. And she's supposed to be on the table. How much enjoy? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay, little pause, guys. So they Okay, Eight. we're back and we're better, better than ever. Okay, I have two more questions for you guys. Okay, so my next question I have is, what are your goals for the future and how will the titles that you have help you to achieve those goals? All right, so you got it. Uh, okay. Um, personally, I actually, I recently got, you know, an offer for my dream job. So, you know, that's, that's really me knocking one of my goals out right there. Um, you know, if, immediate future um i want to get into real estate investing i'm actually looking to get a property off campus next year so that's one of the goals i'm looking forward to and my position can definitely help with that because it's already helped me you know network with people who are in the real estate industry in dc already so it's just going to be easier for me to get to know people and get to know the information i need to know to be able to buy a property at this age in a new place because i was able to make those connections so so, I recently joined Howard Gospel Choir. I got in 
very excited. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's a big, something really big, especially because of my faith and how my faith drives everything. So just joining that, being that opportunity. I actually um, just started. It's called a pre-internship. It's basically where I have two clients where I can practice my craft and practice my career path. So I'm super excited about that. And while it, my position did not help me there, it's just something that I've always wanted to do. I get to see music therapy, and I get to be the therapist in training. So That is awesome. I love how you guys have such big goals, and I could definitely see you guys achieving your goals. And my last question, unless everyone that's on here has more questions for us, is what is a message that you would tell a little boy or girl that doesn't believe in themselves? Something I would tell your biggest obstacle is you. So no matter what you go through, your biggest obstacle will always be you. Once you move out your own way, telling you, you could take off it takes faith that size it's called a mustard seed that size just for you to reach any goal so even if you have that amount of faith you can reach whatever you want to can i ask a like like a question how old is this person because i feel like the advice we need really depends on the age i'm, I'm serious like like I, what 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 i could tell what i could tell a 10 year old is different from what well, i could tell, tell a 15 year old or a three year old Right. So, so like, what mm. age is your age range? Mm -hmm. I want to say that it would be subjective, I guess, to whoever you want to speak to. But um, I guess you can say maybe like someone that's six or seven or that's in elementary school. school. I would just tell them, honestly, the best thing I could tell somebody who's struggling to believe themselves in elementary school is to ask them like how could you how could you doubt yourself when you haven't tested yourself oh like, you're speaking they haven't you you now just talk to them about like how they they have to have more experiences they have to keep pushing themselves 